Hello and welcome to the Comparing Cloud Platforms course for Cloud Academy. My name is Adam Hawkins and I'm your instructor for this course. This course compares different cloud platforms, each with their own strengths, weaknesses, and unique traits. I've put together nine focus areas to compare against so you may choose the best fit for your use case. I myself have been working with cloud providers for almost 10 years now. I've gone through my fair share of small providers in that time and spent a large chunk of it working exclusively with AWS. Now I dabble with Google Cloud Platform and Microsoft Azure. This course covers the big three, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, and Microsoft Azure. We'll go through each with two objectives in mind. I'll propose my nine evaluation criteria for comparing them. You may use these as a base and refine them as needed for your own use case. The goal is to decide which platform fits your particular use case. My recommendations come from a general best fit perspective. So remember to confirm my recommendations with your own analysis for your own exact requirements. This course targets anyone with cloud computing experience or those looking to adopt cloud computing. You'll find this course more helpful if you have any prior experience with one or more providers, but it's not a hard requirement. I'll do my best to fill in the gaps as we go. These providers all have things in common. We won't spend time talking about them because they won't help you make a decision. We can save time right now by starting with the things they have in common. All offer Infrastructure as a Service, or IaaS. This is on-demand access to virtual machines and other compute infrastructure. Each platform offers combinations of CPU, memory, and I.O. to suit different requirements. You may use the infrastructure as a service to build or run any type of application or service if you'd like. Also, each provides Linux and Windows instances. Also, each platform offers load balancers that distribute requests across groups of virtual machines that work with auto-scaling applications. You can also expect networking primitives for managing networking between machines, ingress and egress rules, and also DNS. All provide create, read, and update delete access to files in the cloud and can serve them via a CDN. Each platform shares the same general feature set, so there's nothing particularly interesting to see here. And finally, each platform has different ways to manage users, their access rights, and various things you need to make sure that everything stays on track. The end result is the same, just different kinds of implementations. I'm guessing nothing I just mentioned sounds particularly interesting. That's because it's really not. Competition is fierce between these providers. They differ in how integrated they are into all the different phases of the software development lifecycle. This boils down to how much one provider offers you and what you'll need to get elsewhere. I've broken this down into nine different areas. All platforms provide infrastructure as a service. The question is, do they provide a platform as a service for people who just want to deploy their applications? Serverless is a further abstraction beyond platform as a service. Throw your code into the cloud at a function level and let the provider sort it out. Containers are changing IT. Odds are you'll want support for deploying containerized applications to stay ahead of the curve. Also, applications need databases to store the data. The question is, which data stores does a provider offer you? Just like databases, all applications need telemetry data, like time series metric collection, logging, alerting, and request tracing. Application support is a grab bag for all of the other kind of things you'll need to build, deploy, and run an application in production. This covers automation, pipeline management, messaging, and things like that. Data engineering is another grab bag of data analytics, real-time processing, warehousing, and visualization. All the different providers operate in different geographical regions. This may be a differentiator for you. And we cannot forget dollars and cents. If you can't compete on features, then you need to compete on price. Platforms use different pricing models and different strategies to reduce long-term cost. I'll give you a simple first, second, and third place ranking at the end of each lesson. Each lesson is bite-sized, so you can focus on the bits most relevant to you. Feel free to skip around if you like, the order really isn't important. I'll recap everything in the final lesson. The next lesson covers platform as a service. See you there.